everyone, it's Shell from Scrap Secrets and welcome back to my channel. Today is day two in the 2024 Countdown to Christmas series. Our theme for today is animals and we're going to be creating this no line coloring card. I started off by using a die from MFT and then this stamp set and I believe it was a collaboration for Stamp Timber and I think it might have been Mama Elephant. Oh, I went ahead and stamped out the images in some Hero Arts contour ink, which is great for no line coloring. I wanted to do little vignettes because I thought a scene card would take me too long with masking and stuff. Turns out this did take me a very long time, but I like the way that most of it turned out and we'll kind of walk through some of that. I did have to turn the fireplace around. I stamped it upside down at first, but that's the great thing about the contour ink is that it's so light just because I stamped it one time I was able to turn it around and for the most part I was able to see where everything was. I did have to refer back to the packaging a couple of times just to see what was what and make sure that I was coloring things in properly. I did stamp each image several times and then I went back and I added the in the middle vignette, I added the penguin from the right side to the left side because I wanted that to be symmetrical. And then I will go back and stamp out the sentiment at some point. But here is what all of the images look like after I just did that no line coloring or no line stamping on that. So you can see it's very light. And once I start to put my colors down, the lines really do disappear. While you're watching me color, I thought I would talk a little bit about this series. So if you are new, welcome. If not, welcome back. Marie from Marie's Vermont Creations and I have come up with 25 different themes, techniques, ideas, color schemes, etc. and put them in a randomizer. And are going to create 25 different videos for you. So for this year, you'll have 50. We did the same thing last year. So at the end of this year, you will have 100 different videos that have a bunch of different ideas, themes. Uh, we tried not to duplicate any from last year, and I don't think that we did. So they'll be all different ideas from two different card makers who have two different styles. And for this year, I will say we don't have just cards. There are other projects that we're going to be doing as well. So if you're not into cards, but you're into Christmas ideas, make sure that you check out the whole series because we do have other things that are coming for you. And it's not just stamps. We're going to be using some die cut machines and creating on that. So just a little bit of a peek at what is coming up, but very exciting. Um, she and I, like I said, this is the second year that we've done this. Uh, in the intro video, I do have a link to my playlist. I've been doing this series for a while. A couple years ago, I asked Marie to do one day with me and she enjoyed it so much that I asked her to come back for last year and do every single day and then asked her to come back again because we had so much fun you know coming up with ideas brainstorming and then creating the cards and it's always nice to have somebody who holds you accountable because you'll notice in some of the years past i didn't make it to the full 25 days uh, there was a lot of stuff going on with fred and lucy um, there's a lot of stuff going on this year too with me going back to school, but I have dedicated time that I will make sure that we get all the videos done. So uh, make sure that you do check out that intro video because there's also some information on the giveaways for the series over there. Let's get back to the card. Oh, I knew that I wanted to do the no line coloring technique when I started off this video, but I didn't think I was going to do any other techniques with it. However, this is the part that I got to and I was not really loving the way that it was turning out. The penguins were okay, but when I started coloring the tree, I felt like there was something else we needed to do. So there are ornaments on it. I did color over them at some point. First, I did try to go around them. You'll see this here. I went through and I outlined underneath of it where the shadow would be, but I wasn't really loving the way this turned out. I went through my head and just thought of techniques that I've seen other people do to add some shading or add depth and dimension details. And because Copic markers have a little bit of a bigger point than 
colored pencils, colored pencils can give you different details and colored pencils can go over Copic markers. And I don't think I've ever really done it. I think maybe once or twice, but I'm, again, I'm a novice at a lot of this stuff. And I wanted to try a different technique out with this. These, because these are small scenes, little vignettes, if I messed it up, I would be able to go ahead and either cut that part out, cut another tree and put it over top of it, or just do a whole nother scene. Although it did take me a very long time to do those penguins, so I was not going to do that. But I thought this is one that I could experiment on. This whole series is really about experimentation. A lot of the techniques, uh, Marie came up with about half of them, and then I came up with the other half. And there are some things that are on her, were on her list that I've never done, and I'm sure that there are some things on my list that she's never done. So again, I wanted to challenge myself. It's all about experimentation, learning new techniques, and and growing in your artistic ability. So here's where I picked up some colored pencils and I started coloring and then I thought, oh lord, what have I done? I ruined it. But then as I started coloring more, I really liked it. I added the shading and this is the part where I'm like, oh wow, this tree really started to come to life. I really liked this. Now, I'm not going to say the same thing about all of the images that I did with Copic markers and colored pencils. I think that it works best for really open images like this, where you can add a lot of shading. When I get to the fireplace with the stockings, I didn't like it as much. I don't know whether it was just beginner's luck with this technique and the tree but I really didn't like it as much when I started coloring this. So I'm not going to show you all of it because it's very repetitive. Also, the stockings are very, very tiny on this, but I just went through and uh, did the outlines with my Copic markers so that I could really see where the stones are. If I was truly doing the no line, I would not have outlined these. But because the fireplace was so small, I decided to, that it needed a little bit more definition it was taking a very long time as well, and I thought that this would make it go the fastest. Now, I don't love what I did here. This is one of the ones where I was like, oh, I think I messed this up. Also, it was stamped upside down, so I was having a hard time seeing where some of the lines were. I had to keep referring back. And you'll see here, this is not my favorite part of the whole process, but I did want to leave some of this stuff in because I wanted to show you that even with the whole process, some turn out really well and then some are like, meh. So you guys are gonna have to let me know what part of the no line coloring was your favorite with the, is it better with just the Copics, like mostly on the penguins or do you like the tree better? Let me know if you guys have tried this because it is a really, really fun technique and I do like adding the color pencils over top of it. I have tried no line coloring with colored pencils before too. So I went ahead and stamped out the sentiment in that Distress Oxide in uh, shaded lilac. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do some color on the frame, but it was so stark white and everything, the background was white, and I just thought it needed a little bit of a pop of color. So I actually took this frame was cut out another time from some cardstock because I was actually using it for day three's theme. And I didn't like the way that it was coming out. So this is a piece of watercolor cardstock. Went over it with the shaded lilac and decided that I really liked it and just kept going with it. So now I am fitting the pieces together to see how it all looks. I'm going to be using my bone folder and my scoreboard to score at four and a quarter inches. So it's a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. I do finally have a new bone folder, one that won't leave marks on the black card sack. So I'm super excited about that. I'm using my Barely Arts glue to add glue to the frame. We're going to go ahead and glue that down to the card base and it's a little bit smaller than the card front so you're going to have a little bit of a black border on all sides so it's just trying to make it even that's one of the reasons that i like using glue so much but i did use a little bit too much glue you'll see it seeps out the sides i'm just doing my best to push it either off of the card stack or back into those open areas where the um, vignettes are going to go cover 
Once all three vignettes are popped into place, there's really only one more step that I wanted to do because you guys know that I love my bling and I needed to add some to the card. I'm using my Lawn Fawn glitter pen to add some sparkle to the ball on the bottom of his hat as well as the fur. If you guys have this pen, let me know if you struggle as much as I do. I don't know why, but it just wasn't working for me. The last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a white gel pen and go over a smudge that I have on my card to try to get rid of it. Eraser wouldn't. Well, that's the card for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Head over to Marie's channel to check out what she did. Make sure you leave a comment and I will see you again real soon for another video. Bye!